Blessed be the name of the Lord. Beloved, here we are yet one more time in relationship with God and in relationship with each other. Here to worship the one who has kept us. Here to worship the one who is yet keeping us and allowing us to continue. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Joys are flowing like a river since the Comforter has come. He abides with us forever and makes the trusting heart his home. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what a sure in my soul on the stormy seas Jesus speaks to me and the pillow seeks to roll bringing life and health and gladness all around his heavenly gift he banished unbelief and sadness and changed our weariness to rest. Blessed Holy Quietness, Holy Quietness, what a sure in my soul. On the stormy seas, Jesus speaks to me, and the billows cease to roll. What a wonderful salvation, where we always see his face. What a perfect habitation, what a quiet resting place. You know God is real, church. What a wonderful salvation, where we always see his face. What a perfect habitation, what a quiet resting place. Blessed Blessed quiet, holy quiet, what a sure in my soul. On the stormy seas, Jesus speaks to me, and the billows cease. To Lord, blessed quiet, quiet, holy quiet, what a sure in my soul. On the stormy seas, Jesus speaks to me, and the billows cease to roll. Blessed quiet, holy quiet. What a sure in my soul. On the stormy seas, my Jesus speaks to me. How the billows speak to me. Beloved, we are so thankful that you are continuing to support our ministry here at Bethlehem and the things that we feel that God is calling us to do. And if you wish to send us a gift of offering or tithe, as is our requirement of the faith, uh, that God will pour out a blessing over you that you don't have room enough to receive, then we can receive that via uh, the U.S. mail at Bethlehem Baptist Church 587, Reverend Tony E. Jackson, Senior Way, Newark, New Jersey, 07107. Or also in our online giving channel, Givelify. You can see the link in the Facebook post if you're watching on Facebook, or go to our website, BethlehemNewark.org, and click, click the donate button so that you can be directed to the proper receptacle for your gift. 
Whichever way you give, we hope that you will give your gift of tithes and offerings. We hope that you will also, members, give your anniversary gift. If you haven't done it yet this year, please do so. $110 for every member. And also to feed hungry people. We know it's Thanksgiving coming up this week, and we will give thanks for the opportunities that we have to gather and the meals that we hope to be able to share, if not virtually with our families, but we also wish to be able to support people who are food insecure. Please be sure to tag your giving for hungry people and we will make sure to send it where it can be a relief, a release, and a respite for someone who is food insecure. God bless you, beloved. We sure do appreciate your, uh, your giving to our ministry, and we hope that you won't stop with your financial gifts. We hope that you'll be able to support us with your talent and your time as well. And please contact me because the ministry has needs and there are places where your, uh, your donation can be put to good use. God gave us all something, and we hope that we'll all be able to give it for the kingdom and the kingdom of God. God bless you. Beloved, we're thankful that we had the opportunity to gather this week and we're gonna try a little something new so that we can support other members of our ministry. On Tuesday morning, we're gathering for prayer at 6 a.m. We hope that you'll come along with us that we might be able to lift up some of the needs of our body. And we hope that you'll come along with us at 6 a.m. On Wednesday at 7, we are starting our Bible study at 7 p.m. We're going to do something different. This week we're talking about faith, and we've got a special guest coming to be with us uh, by the name of Dana Lewis, a friend of mine from our church days at young, as young people at Mount Bethel Baptist Church in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Dana was a member of the Obama administration uh, in the first term, and we hope that you will come and hear her powerful testimony of how God used her and her situation to get over the struggle that she was going through. Won't you join us Wednesday at 7 p.m.? We're looking forward to you being with us so that we can go to God together and seek strength to be able to make it in the weeks ahead. And also, we plan to come back together on Thursday at 6 p.m., Thursday at 6 p.m. for another brief word of prayer. Let me tell you, in the days in which we are living, prayer is always in order. And not everybody can make it at 6 a.m. on Tuesday, but we're gonna offer you an opportunity on Thursday at 6 p.m. to join us for prayer in our normal and usual method. Won't you come along? Let me know if you have any questions, and I'm sure that I'll get back to you so that we can get you to come with us as love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me oh love lifted me yeah love lifted me when nothing else could help oh love lifted me oh love lifted me yeah yeah love lifted me oh when Nothing else could help. It was love that lifted me. Love lifted me. Oh, love, love, love lifted me. Oh, when no. Beloved, we have been 
working our way through Micah, the sixth chapter, and the eighth verse. And we have been walking through this, learning uh, from what this text is saying to us and what we must take from it in order to live our lives in God. Uh, 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 I want to read this text one more time so that we can familiarize ourselves with thus saith the Lord. But before I do that, I want to pray and I hope that you will join me in assuming a posture of prayer. God, we're thankful for the word you have left us and how it guides our lives. Now, we ask that you would take this word and plant it deep within us that we might make use of it to live the life you're calling us to live. May the words of my mouth and those uh, meditations of all of our hearts, may that God be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, and the people of God said, Amen. Reading here from the contemporary English version, hear now the word of the Lord. The Lord God has told us what is right and what he demands. See that justice is done. Let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. For a thought this morning, humbly obey your God. We have made it this far into the year. Uh, we have made it to late November. And we are thankful that we have come to this point in the calendar. And today, on our church calendar, today is Men's Day. And we had a great time yesterday as we were led in discussion by Reverend Dr. Willard Ashley, who talked to us about our resilience as men, as black men, as black Christian men, and talked to us about our mental health and wellness and that of the entire body. And I thought it was a wonderful way for us to engage with each other in the weekend in the midst of the what Dr. Ashley called the triple pandemic, both with the uh, coronavirus and with the uh, uh, issue of racial reckoning and with uh, just our understanding of all of the troubles that are facing us as people and also as people. Here we are in the midst of this season, and we're looking back at what the prophet Micah is telling us. And I thought today, as we consider walking with God, as it says in other translations, but here it says in this translation, humbly obey your God. What that says to all of us, but also what it means for us as men of God, what it means to humbly obey our God. Let me say that I know uh, how I was socialized as a male, as a boy growing into a man and uh, here in America, and maybe you have been the same way. Maybe you are always thinking that you have to have the answer, that you have to be one who, when called upon, can deliver the solution. When, when you are driving, you don't need to ask for directions, thank God for GPS, but, but you know the old stereotype, we'll rather be, we'd rather be lost than in a position of vulnerability. Uh, 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 you are, are, are perhaps like me, living in the world, trying to make sure that you live up to the traditions of what you were taught. I, I think of myself when I get dressed in the morning and I go to my armoire, which used to be my father's, and I think about what it was like as a boy watching 
him and his armoire, reaching in and grabbing the clothes that he'll wear, the socks that he'll put on his feet, the cologne that he'll splash on his neck, and what it meant to me to watch a man moving through the world, the pride, the dignity, the, the well-spokenness, the, the well-dressedness, the, 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 the leadership qualities, the way in which he spoke and moved and did the things that I imagined him doing when we worked uh, when we weren't together, this is what it meant to me to be a man. Unfortunately, my father had to transition one day and I had to learn some of the things that I was hoping he would teach me in other ways beyond my 17th year and into my 25th year and into my 35th year. And many times I had to simply Look to God to say, God, I need to know how to make it. God sent men into my life who were able to help train me, uncles and, and preachers and, and professors and friends who could help me to understand what it meant to be a man in this world. But let me tell you something. I think that God also came and said, there are some things, son, that you need to know. Uh, you don't have to always have the solution. And sometimes I'm hearing my wife's voice in my ear. I'm hearing the words of, of other women who have, have taught me some things that said, you know what, the ways in which you are living as a man may not be the ways in which God wishes you to live as a man. Maybe you don't have to have an answer to every problem I'm giving you. Maybe you don't have to explain all of the ways that I was wrong in this situation. Uh, give me some support. Uh, these were hard lessons to learn. Maybe, maybe you could be more vulnerable when you are with people. Uh, you don't have to always be so strong. You, you, you can have some velvet with that steel. These, uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is something that perhaps uh, we need to figure out. But I think that here in Micah, as Micah speaks to everybody, wherever you might find yourself on the gender spectrum, Micah speaks to every person, young and old and in between, wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you come from, if you call on the name of the Lord, Micah has a word for you. And it says, uh, as Micah speaks for God, saying, humbly obey your God. Humbly obey your God. I think that we need to recognize men and everyone else who's listening in to this conversation. I think we need to recognize that we must live into the relationship we have with God. Relationship is implied as it says, and I just want to read it, humbly obey your God. We are in that phrase connected to God in a relationship where we can have continuous creative encounters, as Howard Thurman calls them, with God. We are in relationship and we've got to live into this relationship where we seek God in the name, in the words of James Fowler, as the center piece of, the, of value in our lives. God is at the center of value in our lives. We must recognize that God is the sole source uh, of power and authority in the universe. God is the sole creative architect and, and reason for being for all that there is. And we have to see God in that place and then see ourselves in relationship to God. What does that mean? That means that we need to follow. That means that we need to obey. That means that we need to respect the things of God. That we need to read the commandments of God. There are more than 10. But we need to understand the rules of God. That we need to understand that our relationship to God and at breath, really that God is the foundation of everything that there is and we, as in relationship with God, must respect that. This brings about the concept of humility. 
This, this, the way that this word is used in the Hebrew uh, by my study comes up one other time in the 11th chapter of Proverbs where it says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. But wisdom is with the humble. It is wise for us to remember to walk humbly with God. And what does that mean? As we live into this relationship, we've got to live up to the requirements of the relationship. We've got to know that there are things that God requires of us and we are not too big to end up having to do them. There are things that God requires of us and we must respect that God has said, this is the way, young man. This is the way, old man. This is the way that you must go and I want you to walk this path. And even when you don't want to walk this path, let me tell you something. When you're the man of the house and you get the big piece of chicken, you have a voice that no one else in the house, if you grew up like I grew up, no one in the house has that, that quite that way of speaking as you do. Uh, you are a power and an authority, and it's easy to live into that and enjoy a privilege and go too far and forget that you aren't better than everybody else, that you just have to uh, a position and a relationship to everybody else and, and you've got to work that out with your spouse and you've got to work that out with your children. I'm not telling you how to live. I'm just telling you that if we are going to be men of God, we have got to remember that we can't think too much of ourselves. We are not better. We are not greater than. We are not more important than. Value isn't heaped upon us more so than others. We must remember that we have to humbly walk with God. We have to humbly obey our God. Wisdom says that we must not be prideful. Sometimes that means that we are going to have to be more vulnerable with each other. Sometimes that means that we're going to have to recognize when we are weak and seek God even more, we are going to have to recognize that that means that we just can't fly off the handle. We've got to humbly walk with God. We've got to humbly obey our God. We've got to realize and recognize that we are in relationship with God and we have to live up to that relationship. We've got to live up to that relationship, not, not walking around and saying, I enjoy a privilege because I'm a man and I'm a man with God. No, but saying that because I am a man of God, I must serve other people. I must recognize that I am but a man, not a man, but but a man. And I make mistakes and I am fallible and I have troubles and I have pains and I have hurts. And when I'm hurt, I must recognize them. I can take them to God. I can seek therapy. I can say I'm sorry. I can say I was wrong. I can say I love you anyway, even though you hurt me, rather than striking out, rather than using words to hurt somebody, rather than saying you've got to do what I say just because I say do it because I am a man. No, brothers and sisters, we must humbly obey our God, the one with whom we are in relationship. We have to be vulnerable with God, not being afraid to say to God, I am weak. I am hurt. I am in need of deliverance. And while you are delivering me, I need strength not to fall back into the things that I am have done to require deliverance. Beloved, we've got to live into a relationship with God. We've got to live up to the relationship that God has enabled with us. Living up to the requirements. What are some of the requirements? Well, perhaps that points us to being able to live in right relation with God and with everyone else. And don't forget, let's go back to the text. Let us not forget uh, 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 that God says the Lord God has told us what is right. 
and what he demands. See that justice is done. Let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. Perhaps sometimes humbly obeying our God is remembering the other two requirements right here in Micah 6, 8 to make sure that justice is done and to let mercy be our first concern. Sometimes just being in right relationship with everybody else is remembering that God requires this of us. As we look around the landscape and we see all manner of people making theological claims about what it means to be a Christian, about what it means to follow Jesus, about what it means to call on the name of the Lord, we must remember that God has a relationship with us and is calling us to live into that relationship calling us to live up to that relationship and saying to us that we must be in right relation with everyone else. This is why Jesus can tell somebody, hey, listen, you've got to love God with all your mind and all your soul and all your strength, and you've got to love your neighbor as you love yourself because it is what this all hangs on, all the law and all the prophets. And Micah agrees, we must remember, men, that we have to keep justice in our front view. We have to see that it is done. We have to let mercy be our first concern. See about justice being done in our homes See about justice being done in our relationships with our spouses and with our children, but also being merciful. Letting mercy be our first concern, first in our homes, even in our blocks, dealing with people that we come into contact in ev with every day, and remembering that as we are working for justice and loving the mercy, seeing that it is our first concern, that we must remember to humbly obey our God. Oh, everybody isn't wrong out beside, out in the world and us being right. We've got to remember that God has requirements on all of us and sometimes we all fail. It's not all about the wrongness of everyone else and my righteousness. It is about God's righteousness and that double-edged sword cuts us too. That sometimes requires that we need to make sure that we can sit our own selves down in God and say, God, I did it wrong. And I was wrong with this person that I was supposed to be in right relationship with. And now I'm asking that you would forgive me and I can go to them and ask for forgiveness myself. Sometimes it requires for us to remember that those who we are seeking justice for and those who we are in conversation with who are on the oppressive end of society, as we seek to show them that God says thus and so, we can also remember that we are not better than them. Perhaps we have a different word picture when justice comes up, when mercy comes up, when humility comes up. But that doesn't mean that we are greater than them. That doesn't mean that we ourselves won't do the same thing to somebody else in a different way. Remember that sometimes we might be seeking racial equality and equity and yet living and holding up and promoting a patriarchal society. These things ought not be. We ought not get fresh water and brackish water from the same fountain. Don't be in this situation where we can't realize that we ourselves can be wrong. And being in right relationship with our brothers and sisters as we humbly obey our God means that you are always in a place of self-reflection. You are always in a place seeking God for your improvement. Staying in right relationship with other people means that you've got to think about what it is that you are doing and how you're living and how you are treating people. Oh, we, we talked on Saturday with Dr. Ashley and he said that you have to work on your holiness and on your healthy habits and on your, uh, 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 your health. But see, the thing is, you've got to recognize as we go through life in all of these different ways, to see how you're doing, to ask God, am I lacking in my holiness? 
Am I lacking in how I'm approaching my, my healthy habits? Am I not living up? God, help me to evaluate myself. Show me where I need help and let me know how I can be better. Listen, and when the Spirit convicts you, make the change. Do the thing that God is calling you to do. Be the person God is calling you to be. It is okay to release our preconceived notions of what it means to be a man if God is telling us walking humbly means that you've got to let that go, son. You've got to let that go. Walking humbly obeying me means you've got to let go of, our, of the ways in which you learn how to be the person you are. God is calling us to a new future, to being a different person. To, to, to living in a different way. And the prophet Micah is speaking into our lives how it is that we ought to live. And if we are going to be who God is calling us to be, we cannot be afraid of the change that God requires. This thing is about relationship. This whole thing is about relationship. Relationship with God. Being able to live as God requires. And remembering that God is the center of everything, the foundation of our world, will we follow? Will we appreciate? Will we live into the relationship? Will we live up to the relationship? And will we seek right relation with everybody? Brothers, sisters, I hope that we will do it. Perhaps you're looking to, to, to come up a little bit in your relationship with God, to change a little bit with your relationship with God, to be the person God is calling you to be. Here, we open the doors of our church and offer opportunity for you to walk right in, to enter a new relationship with God in Christ Jesus. We know that Jesus is the way of salvation, that no one comes to the Father except by God in Christ Jesus. And we seek for you to know the joy that we know in our relationship. Pray with us. God, we ask your help for us today as we seek to be the children that you are calling us to be. Help us as men to live as you are calling us to live. Help us all as people to do that which you are calling us to do. We ask God right now that you would open our hearts and our minds that if we haven't recognized Jesus the Christ that we can do so now knowing that we are all sinners and knowing that we can be forgiven in Christ Jesus. We confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we know even if we have already been saved that you have a place for us to attain and you are leading us into a new and different relationship with greater dimensions. And we, God, are following where you are going. Please take us and help us to appreciate the path and walk it as you are leading. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Oh, we look forward for the opportunity for us to get together again, but please let us know if we can be of service to you, if we can lift you up, if we can pray for you, if we can direct you to, to resources that, that you need for your deliverance. We want to be in relation with you. We ask that you would just simply reach out and let us know how we can be of service, how we can be of help, how we can pray for you and for you. And until we have the opportunity to come together again, please receive this benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and evermore. And the people of God said amen and amen. Go in peace, beloved, and may the peace of God 
and I go with you. Beloved, there is still opportunity to contribute to the Day of Thanks being held by the North Ward Clergy Interfaith Alliance. Your delivery contributions of food for Thanksgiving can be received up until 2 p.m. today. Friendship Ministries, 111-113 Arlington Avenue in Newark. Let me know if you have questions and I will make sure to connect you to this great effort to take care of those who are food insecure. Yeah.